All right, let's see. Okay, that works. And then this thing, and then I flip this button. Why are, why are some of my icons missing all of a sudden? What in the world? All right, let's see. Does it still work if I push this button? No. What the ever love biscuit? What's going on here? Oh, that was weird. It really just shut off and turned back on again. Did work. There we go. Ha ha, you son of a bitch. Yeah, I got you. Ha ha. You thought you could take me down, piece of errant gear that didn't want to behave. I've got, yes. No, no, I no longer need to be on hold. I fixed it myself. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, jeans and a t-shirt. Why? That's disgusting and inappropriate. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. It's House Marks Mega Worldwide. Like, subscribe, thumbs up, Ian. I forgot to turn on my, oh, oh, my overhead light because it just... It's a glare nobody needs. Hi, hello, how are you? I'm gonna get some backlights to kind of fill it in and take a, uh, out the, I'll worry about that later. You don't need to know this, it's nobody's business. So, um, welcome to the show. You know, too much to talk about again. There's just too much. I've got so many clips and so little time and it's a, it's a, it's a party that's just waiting for your pants. Um, I will say that we are um, fundamentally uh, we're missing out on a couple of people right now. We do not have any Marjorie. We we got Marjorie later, but we don't have me. I can't wait to see Marge later. Uh, but I'm a huge fan of who you're gonna have on first. I I know I know, and I it scares me <coughs> that you're that um uh that excited about our first person because. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't cover this 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 uh this youngin, this little uh, whippersnapper that often because quite frankly, he's a stunning bore. But I, you know, there's an area of the internet where that's a thing. Uh his his name is Tim Pool and there he is. And he wears he's got a uniform that he wears to work, just like uh, you know, uh a Burger King manager, always with the hat, always blackjack. If he doesn't wear it, fans get very upset. They don't know how to deal, you know. It's like the 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 group of them that uh, on right side. Every time I put my hair in a ponytail, they think I've cut it. That kind of stuff. I I'm sure, you know. I just roll with it. I just go, no, see, it's here, it's still here. It's just whatever. Uh, but his his fan base, you can't uh, you can't you, you you can't mess around with those folks. They will panic if he goes a day without the beanie. Sh it's career is over. That's branding. That's like. Woody Allen losing his glasses or or uh uh Matt Gates not having uh um underage nude girls on his phone. You know what I mean? There's things you do that are on brand and you stay there. Thank you for the super chat, by the way. Uh you can support the show via patreon.com slash house marks, Venmoing and and Snapchatting and all that kind of stuff that happens over there. And then of course, just like and subscribe. We're getting there. We're building up our numbers. Uh we're just doing that. Anyway, so yes, it's like Hall losing his oats. It's like uh, uh, the breakup of Wham. That's that's what would happen if Tim Pool ever. Um, well, I, I know he can't shave his beard because it'll look like Charlie Brown. So that's going to stay forever. We'll just count on that. Um, and then uh, the beanie, obviously, like I said, it's a. He's probably got an endorsement from uh, you know Beanie Co. Right now. It's just he can't he can't do it. I'm calling him out. There you go. L sorry. Yeah, that I'm, I'm throwing down the gauntlet. <laughs> Tim Pool cannot do a show without the beanie on. Can't do it. Never will. Never can. Or the show's over. That is the that if you if you want to know when he's going to retire, that's when it's going to happen. He's just like fuck this. You know what I mean? He's going to snatch his own weave, as it were. Hello, Scotland. How are you? Good to have you. Come to how? So, <laughs> yes. I got to sing Southern man. Uh, all right. So um, this is, uh, I've been trying to figure out, you know, we have Bongholio. We have uh, Greg Kelly, the most miserable man on the internet. We have our little, uh, you know, kind of phrases or nicknames that sum up who these folks are as a shorthand for uh, longtime watchers. 
and I, I was, you know, Tim Pool, we've seen him a couple times, and I've seen his other stuff when he's had other people on and whatever. He, like, he just had Chenk Uger on. That was a fucking train wreck for both of them. It's just hilarious. Um, uh, by the way, in case you're keeping score, um, uh, on one half of the internet, uh, Tim Pool calmly um, asserted that Chenk had no facts. And on the other side, um, uh, uh, Chenk cucked Tim Pool. Either way, they both destroyed each other's each other, and uh, and uh, and no, none of you know this because it mattered not in the great scheme of life. So, anyways, here we are with uh, Tim Pool, and I have decided. So, so shall it be. So let it be written. So let it be done. That uh, Tim Pool will uh, forever be known because of all the clips I've seen as a man who was born to be butt hurt. Born to be but hurt. It seems like everything, like that's how he absorbs the world. The world is out to get Tim Pool's ass. Tim Pool is born to be but hurt. That's that. I, I, it's the only way I can describe it. Cause every fucking thing he says is like the whole fucking world is trying to, you know, like. Bull weevil its way up his his chocolate whiz wang and lay eggs, and he's just like nope, nope, all the time. All right. Um, so, anyways, you'll see what I mean because I, I I have no doubt this will be a similar situation. Trump judge donated to stop Trump and refuses to recuse. Trump trial is rigged. Rigged, rigged, rigged. It's rigged. The whole thing is rigged against you. Oh my God. Hold on, I'm not doing that right. Hold on, let me, give me one second. It's more like, um, no, but leave Tim Pool alone. It's not fair, okay? Okay, it's not fair. It's just not. <laughs> Tell him, Tim, go for it, buddy. It's all right. Fire it up. Fire it up. Like, we're heading in this direction. I don't know what the res- Oh, hold on a second. Why are my headphones not on? It's so sad. I don't need to hear it through the- that's crazy pants. No, but stop it. Here we go. Results of the Trump lawsuit in Colorado is going to be. But already we are getting shocking information. The judge in the case donated. Oh, shocking. To a group to remove Republicans who supported Trump on January 6th. Let All right. So here's the premise. The, the, the fix is in because the judge donated to a group that was trying to get rid of Republicans who supported the Jan 6 insurrection. Now, it is Tim that is attaching Trump to the insurrection at this point. Because that's what he's insisting. If you went after Republicans that were participants in it, obviously Trump was one of them. But then I'm, I, I suppose he's going to make the case that because uh, they're trying to remove him with the 14th Amendment and he, whatever... He's not involved in the insurrection. But according to Tim, he is. Let me stress, the judge financially provided resources. Oh, my God. Pens, papers, Twinkies, a nice cheese plate. Two groups to, to multiple groups. remove Republicans who supported Donald Trump. Or supported the insurrection, the actual attack on the Capitol. Now, I, I thought that Trump said walk down there peacefully and patriotically. I mean, there were obviously some Republicans that were inside there, you know, calling in exactly where Nancy Pelosi was, not, you know, talking about where the vice president was, that kind of shit. Like those people, maybe he was focused on those people and maybe Donald Trump was an innocent bystander because all he said was walk down there peacefully and patriotically. Of course, he said, if you're not strong uh, and, and fight to take our country back, when you get there, if Mike Pence doesn't do what, uh, he's supposed to then because he's scared of all you fuckers out there. You might have to build a gallows. So s can somebody go to Home Depot? All right. Now she is presiding over a case to remove Donald Trump from the, the ballot. Well, it's, and she must feel so lucky that uh, that he participated in the insurrection uh, in the you know on January sixth. Otherwise, she wouldn't have any ammo whatsoever. Oh boy. Oh boy. Minnesota's next. See what I mean though about the whole born to be butthurt? 
also, uh, Tim is one of these people who um, views himself as uh, a, a moderating voice. Next. Michigan is next. And I want. Well, which is it? Hold on. Oh, boy. Minnesota's next. Michigan is next. Michigan is next after Minnesota, or did you just get mixed up with two M words? It's okay. You know what? Uh, you should go. Um, I think Trump is in Sioux Falls right now. You should drive there immediately. And I wonder how this will play out. But if you've got a judge. I, oh, uh, Chris Nibley in the chat room says, have you seen the news about Country Garden and Evergreen in China recently? Yes, I have. And as a matter of fact, uh, Thursday, I'm going to do an extra special report on it. Because holy fuck. Don't get me started on the uh, six percent drop just last month in exports, following an eight percent drop the month before and a twelve percent drop the month before that, and that's compared to last year, which was ass. Okay. Anyways, back to uh, Captain Butthurt, um, who's wearing the anal condom on the top of his head, just in case. Who financially supports groups to remove Republicans who support Donald Trump over? January 6th. I see. So if, so she doesn't give a fuck about Republicans that support Donald Trump that weren't involved in January 6th. She's cool with them. Like she's not giving money in general to just like the, you know, how to, uh, I don't know, uh, to primary somebody, uh, I don't even, it's a hard time finding, I'm having a hard time figuring, like thinking of a Republican that doesn't support him in the answer. Either. Mitch McConnell, let's just say. Presiding over this case, you think you're going to get a fair trial? No. Y yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty fair. Yeah, especially if, you know, the, the distinction is about whether or not he was a participant or not, because there'll have to be evidence to support that. Now, now, hold on. There's a lot. Are, are, are you talking to me or are there other people in the studio? A lot that could happen. Maybe the judge will be fair. Maybe the judge will be like, look, I made a donation a while ago. I don't really know a lot about it, but present me your evidence. There's one other big factor at play. Oh, shit. Here it comes. Well, now how we do. The Trump legal team said in order to argue on the 14th Amendment, the individual has to have been convicted of insurrection or rebellion. And she goes, nah. Yeah, I don't care what they said. That's not true. You don't have to. It doesn't say in the Constitution you have to be convicted of it. You just have to participate in it. Aid and comfort. All that kind of stuff. Like he literally, just the words he said, you're wonderful, we love you, now go home. Even the how he phrased that is aid and comfort to the people who attacked on January 6th. That qualifies, fuckwad. That you don't, you do not have to be, nobody thinks that. Who gives, wait a minute. You, this, this is all going to boil down to, Tim Pool thinks that, a judge is going to uh, take Trump's attorney's legal ideas at face value. Uh-huh, okay. She said no! Right, because constitutionally that's true. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. The Trump team argument is you need to prove Someone has to be tried and given due process over insurrection, and then you can say. <clears throat> One moment, please. <clears throat> Let's see. Section three. This would be section three of the uh, thing. No person, no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress. Oh, sorry, it's section two. I, I'm reading below it. Scroll you up. There, there you go. Hold on one second. Um, shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president or and vice president or hold any office civil or military, under the United States or under any state who, having previously taken an oath, which Donald Trump did to you know, protect and serve and the, the best of my ability, all that shit, as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States, which I, I think uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the president qualifies as an officer of the uh, 
United States, or as a member of any state legislature, or an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same, or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. But Congress may, by a vote of two-thirds of each house, remove such disability. So, uh, guess what, fuckhead? You n- you not only, uh, c- in this particular instance, don't have to be found guilty of insurrection in a fucking court of law for this to apply. Um, if it's just generally understood that you did, it takes two-thirds of the fucking House or Senate, to, uh, of each House, House and Senate, both, to remove it. Now, I know and you know and we know and the, and all we know and everybody knows that um, Tim Pool is not is not very bright, and he is desperately clinging to his status as someone who was born to be but hurt. Um, but um, the the legal argument from Trump's team is ass. And without merit, that's my that's my legal finding, and I have as much uh, legal education as Tom Fitton. So, you have to take me seriously. All right. Wait, wait. Play this again. Go for it. It's definitive. Here we are. Wait, hold on. What's definitive? Back the fuck up. Then you can say it's definitive. Here we are. Um, no, that's not how it works at all. Here's a good idea, dumbass. Instead of holding up whatever the fuck article this is, where is it from? We don't know. Politico? Is that what it is? It's very small type. Uh, instead of putting this up, how's about ya, Tim? How's, how's about it? How's about you, you put up the, sec- the section of the 14th, 14th Amendment that pertains to whether or not somebody can run for office? Just put it up there. Just say that argument and then show the actual text of the Constitution of America and uh, read that. Or, or you also have another option, which is to put up this article about whatever the fuck that you picked out because you're knocking low-hanging fruit or something like that. And you, or you just really want to gander at Trump's nunt. Here we are. PBS. Here we are. Just the two of us. Reports arguments in lawsuit using insurrection clause to knock Trump off the presidential ballot begins. I love this. I love how they phrase this. You mean pretty blandly in like NPR kind of language? First, you can see that PBS, they don't actually mention the plaintiffs. They don't tell you who's doing it. Oh my God, the fucking nerve. You mean voters and and people who are against Trump running because, uh, I mean, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, most, if not all, of the people who are involved in it saw Jan 6 on television, at the very least. It's intentional. Or maybe they got the book or the graphic novel, perhaps. They go to mention, at the start of Monday's hearing in Colorado, the judge rejected a Trump motion that she step aside because she once contributed money to a liberal group. You gotta love the media. Well, it's a, a liberal. It's okay, my friends. We got this tweet from Mike Davis. Mike Davis. Oh, I love Mike Davis. I don't know, only, only man that make that was Mike Davis. Has the receipts. He's uh oh. This new Denver District Judge Sarah Wallace, a Democrat donor, commits reversible error by refusing to recuse from Trump January sixth case after donating to anti Trump January sixth pack. Anti Trump January sixth pack. So is that a pack that supported what went on on January sixth, but is mad because Donald Trump didn't? Pardon those folks when he said he would or could, and now he says he will, but most for most of the people, it'll be after they've served their term, and it involves them uh, having to enter in a, a, a culpability or a guilty plea. That's right. She is actively working with a PAC seeking political goals pertaining to January 6th while presiding over a January 6th case. Uh, no, that's not a January 6th uh, case, actually. It isn't. You don't, you don't even have to be, and this will be very difficult. Uh, I mean, they should apply it across the board. But if you are a member of Congress or a state house that said, uh, you know, that cheered, it was overheard by someone cheering on what happened on January 6th and, you know, and was doing a big go get them. I'm going to, I'm going to say, technically speaking, you could be 
removed from the ballot at whatever job in the government you want to have based on that alone. Because you took an oath and then you uh, supported by giving aid and comfort to them, the comfort being, I'm, I got your back, whether you were there or not. Okay. You thought you were gonna, there was going to be a fair trial? You thought? Yeah, there is. I, I'm sure it drives her a little bit crazy because I think she's like, skip to the end. I thought the legal system was going to play this right. Look, blue states and red states are worlds apart from each other. Well, yeah, the, I mean, the red states are paid for by the blue states, largely. These people are evil. <laughs> <laughs> Not the people who went up the steps of the Capitol and took a shit in the rotunda and waved the Confederate flag and built a fucking gallows and were screaming, hang Mike Pence, or were there fe FaceTiming or Facebook living with their family going, I'm, an, I'm here to put a bullet in, in Nancy Pelosi's fucking brain. Or the people who fucking danced a jig when her husband was attacked or anything. That, those people aren't. Those people are innocent victims. How dare you? How? Why you, did you leave them alone? Why? She should be disbarred. She should be disbarred or removed or. I removed or something. I agree. Impeach. I think it's a judge. I think. Impeach. Impeach. It put cut her up in pieces. I mean, that's not what I meant to say, but I mean it. It's an impeachment. It's an impeachment. Give her a peach and tell her to go the fuck home. What we need to do. What do we need to do? Tell me, Tim, because I have no idea. What must be done. What must be done? Tell me what must be done. And what mu what mu must not not be done? The f what must not 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 be done? Tell me what must be done. Tell me what must be done. No, 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 what? Tell me what not to do first, because that's always easier. That requires less effort. I think I don't know. First thing that everyone needs to do is you call your reps. Yeah, call your my and call your peeps. You 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 organize. That's right. You get a, you get together and you put out a plate of cookies and you make some flyers and then you go to Charlottesville with some tiki torches and you say Jews will no that's not who oh, not again. Support people like Scott Pressler. This that's right. Scott Scott Elvis Presley. I agree. What who? must be one in the courts. It must be one in the courts, people, even though it's going to be lost in the courts and you could lose because it's courts. It's got to be lost in one. Is this a thing we're to do or not to do? I've lost track. And you say, but how, Tim, the judges? Yes, because. But how, Tim, the judges? That's exactly what I was. Saying. Republicans need to be filing in Republican states in the same way. That's right. They need to. Try to get Joe Biden removed for supporting January 6th in red states. I don't know why Colorado isn't a red state. They have cowboy hats. There is, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Thank God. It's a train. Fuck, get off the tracks, everybody. I can smell the smoke. It is. Do not take the defeatist approach. No, I am not defeated. I'm just out there. What needs to happen is, I don't know. There needs to be some efforts to win. I don't know about that. And that seems like a lot. That seems like a lot. I don't know. Uh, some effort? The fuck? What? You just keep... Tim, you take, and you take, and you take, and then you're like, why don't, why don't you give me a little more? Oh my God. Fuck you. Yeah. The last thing anyone needs... Is a spike up the... But that's because you, Tim Pool, of all people, were born to be buttered. Violence, riots, and protests. Yeah, you don't need that. You need, I mean, obviously, you, it, 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 Tim has a pinwheel at his house. They spin, and you pick one. I mean, you got to focus. Because if you're, if you're rioting, I guess it technically aren't all riots violent. You know what I mean? Like, has there ever been a Nerf riot? <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. What we need now is... What the world needs now is but hurt but... Organization and lawfare. Repo That's what we need. We're a little late to the game and 
Trump's lawyers suck and we have no legal argument, but Tim has been staring at Tom Fitton's rouge very hard lately and making some very difficult life decisions. Republicans in red states need to be filing the exact same things about Joe Biden. Yeah, you're going to have a real hard time with the what's the what's the aid and cover? I, I want to hear the case. This is great. Please. All right. I, I, yeah, buddy, he's about to tell us. Lock, uh, lock it up. Here comes the roundhouse. Seriously. 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 Now, I know he's serious. You know he's serious. But I do appreciate that he says seriously after seriously, like every four, like seriously, five sentences. Seriously. Like, you can't be super serious enough. Joe Biden's staff contributed to far-left insurrectionists who firebombed White House grounds and forced President Trump into a bunker. Com um, yeah, but that would be, they weren't at the direction of Joe Biden, and he actually wasn't in office at the time. Um, and also, he's against it. Um, also, they were contributing to people who were protesting who got arrested, they were like getting bail money for people who were part of the protest, but got lumped in with the rioters. So the idea is they were trying to make that distinction at the very least. Kamala Harris can be removed right now. She directly did it. Yeah, but under the premise that she was helping people get out of jail that were just protesting and not rioting. She wasn't trying to get rioters out. She's trying to get protesters out who Trump was scooping up. Directly. Seriously. Solicited money for those waging insurrection. No, no. Burning a target down because you feel bad about what happened to George Floyd is not an insurrection. I, I don't know if uh, Tim knows this, but we don't vote at Target. We don't even, much as you might like, uh, vote in churches. But I, I guess you're right. Yeah. Yeah, Vic, in the chat, I think Biden's done. I think uh, this is uh, rock solid. This is ironclad. Oh, and you might argue it's not insurrection, though, because it, no. Hey, they're- hey. Hey, 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 it's not, but okay, sorry, go ahead. Playing that game, it's time. Oh, I'm playing that game. To play the game, where there are- That's right, you're playing the game, it's time to play the game. Play the game. Do, do, do. Right. Here's what Mike says. Here's what Mike says, thank God. On October 18th, 2022, Democrat Governor Jared Polis appointed Democrat donor Sarah Wallace as a Denver district judge. January 10th, 2023. On October 15th, Judge dun, dun, dun. That's all I needed. Is there more? Okay. Judge designee Sarah Wallace donated to the Colorado Turnout Project, a political action committee formed to vote out Republicans who supported Trump on January 6th. So so she just was part of a get out the vote thing. Like she didn't try to raise money to like use lawfare to attack them. She didn't give money to try to use extra judicial means. She literally gave money to a get out the vote. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right. I didn't realize it was this serious. I, I should have when he said seriously. This week, Judge Wallace is holding a highly unusual and unconstitutional trial to determine whether to disqualify. Yeah, you, you do realize she didn't actually call it. You know, they, they assign it to a judge. She didn't just like, I'm going to do this. I need just to... Okay, need me some plaintiffs. Where am I going to find some plaintiffs? Fight Trump from the ballot based upon his activities on January 6th. Well, and to be fair, his uh, also his activities leading up to January 6th and his activities after January 6th. Lots of them. Especially the aid and comfort part, which he's done a shit ton of since. Judge Wallace previously rejected all of Trump's legal arguments. Well, to be fair... They were just arguments. They had no basis in law. So calling them legal arguments in and of itself is, uh, that's some beanie business. And I, and I don't think that's right. Including the only way to disqualify for insurrection under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment is to win a federal criminal conviction under no. the federal insurrection criminal statute Congress passed to execute Section 3, which they did. Well, all right. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Uh, the federal stat. Oh, sorry. Let me find my na, na, na. Da, da, da. Uh, federal statute section three of of fourteenth amendment. Let's look at it. Let's give it there. Okay, <clears throat> section three. There's the 
disqualification, U.S. Constitution, uh, insurrection, the insurrection bar to office, Section 3 of the 14 CRS reports, uh, 14th Amendment section, that's just the section itself, uh, bah, 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 bah. amnesty in Section 3, turning over the text, that's uh, it's from a school, Section 3, Enfor let's go to enforcement, that okay. <clears throat> What is the one? Where is it? The insurrection barred office. Okay, we'll set. We'll look at this CRS report. Congressional Research Service. Here we go. This is the whole. Oops. Get back up here, you jerk. Come on. All right. So, updated aftermath events of January 6th around the U.S. Capitol. There have been calls for accountability of those who participate, as well as for the disqualification. Code. No person shall be a senator or president. Okay, that's the section three. In short, Section 3 disqualification appears to apply to any covered person who has taken an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States and thereafter either engages in it or Enacted in the aftermath of the Civil War, it's specifically designed for the Reconstruction era, but may be applicable to modern times as well. Section 3, for the most part, used only for the short period between its ratification in 1872 and the Amnesty Act, removed the disqualification from most Confederates and their sympathizers, and was enacted by a two-thirds majority of Congress in the accordance of their as a Reconstruction. Okay, so they're like, they basically had a truce. In that. Some argue the Amnesty Act uh, operates retrospectively. <laughs> yeah, so that the so that that clause in the Constitution is completely meaningless. Um, that's yes, no. Okay, Cawthorn versus Amalfi discussed at legal sidebar. The U.S. Court of Appeals of the Fourth Circuit found that the act does not apply to la later uh, later insurrections, later insurrections, or treasonous acts. Section three of the Fourteenth uh, Amendment. This is uh, in reaching a Caw this is Madison Cawthorn. Uh, hold on. Discussed in this legal sidebar. Some argue. We'll look at that in a second. Some argue. Uh, it was a failed argument. Um, but okay. Uh, let's see. Court threw out his espionage conviction for judicial bias. Recently, the various groups and organizations have challenged the eligibility of certain. Okay, it doesn't mean they've made it. To whom does it apply? According to the text of Section 3 of the Bar Against the fit, Office of Members of Congress, Offices of the United States, blah, blah, blah. Uh, any civil or military officer. It's anybody who's taken an oath already. During the debate on the Section 3, one senator asked why ex-Confederates may be elected president or vice president, and why did you uh, all omit to exclude them? I do not understand them to be excluded from the privilege of holding two ICE offices as a gift to the nation. Um, let me call the senator's attention to the words, or hold any office, civil, military, or under the United States. Um, in January 2021, first article of impeachment against President Donald Trump, how said it would... What activities trigger the bar? Engagement in insurrection rebellion. Implementation. It is unclear whether Section 3 is self-executing, uh, which is if, it is, uh, if it is not, would leave federal and state courts or election authorities without power to determine the eligibility of candidates unless Congress enacts legislation to permit it. Courts have produced mixed results in this. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, under January 6th, disqualified from holding current federal... Blah, blah, blah. Alternately, any injured private party could ask a judge to issue a writ of quo warranto uh, to prevent the uh, seating of or to oust from office an individual who allegedly engaged in disqualifying activities, although it is unclear who would be, have standing to bring such a suit, which is like groups of voters or people who were affected directly. Congress could also enact a new legislation. Yeah, that hasn't happened. In contrast, general proclamation uh, legislation is akin to the Ku Klux Klan Act. Ku Klux Klan Act. I don't want to mess up their name. That would be rude. Um, there is some debate as to whether Congress can enact a law naming specific individuals subject to disqualification. As it is discussed in another legal sidebar, some argue that con uh, Congress has the right under Section 3, while others count or that the uh, court has described a bill of attainder, a law that legislatively determines guilt and inflicts punishment upon an identified, uh, identifiable individual without provision of the protections of judicial... Okay, uh, the point I'm trying to make is uh, it doesn't make a fucking lick of difference. Um, no. You do not have to be found fucking guilty. Just because certain scholars have thought of this seriously. Trump has not been convicted. Today, Judge Wallace... Uh, for the record, though, he will be. Does that... Uh, are you cool to wait or whatever? Because, I, I mean, that would make it exciting. ...admitting to making the anti-Trump January 6th donation said she didn't remember making it, but despite her donation, she claimed she can be fair. But her subjective belief in her... Well, it was a get-out-the-vote campaign. That was trying to unseat specifically, probably Mike Lee and a couple of others. Ability to be fair is not the correct legal standard. The standard is an objective one. With the public reasonably, will the public... Re okay, so uh, so what's her name in Florida has got to go? Because she was actually appointed by Donald Trump and she's overseeing his case. So, uh, so obviously you had a panic attack about the Florida Mar-a-Lago case. 
because that judge was literally, she got her job from the guy that she's trying. But uh, anyways, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Something about fairness. Reasonably, reasonably believe she can give Trump a fair January 6th related bench trial after she donated to an anti-Trump January 6th pack. The answer is Again, clearly not. Hold this on. is the reversible error. No, the, 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 to be clear, if I may, um, the reference to it being, quote, anti-Trump, when it specifically deals with Republicans that were involved in the January 6th insurrection, again, um, presumes guilt on Trump's part. But, but continue, you were by, I hate interrupting you when you're being stupid. But will the Democrat-controlled Colorado appellate courts correct this? No. That's not the game, baby. Yeah, baby. Come on, son. That's not the game, baby. Come on, sister. That is not the game. That ain't the game, baby. Don't hate the player. Hate the... No, don't hate the game. Hate the... Don't... Yeah, if it's a Democrat, hate the player, not the game. If it's a Republican, hate the game, not the player. That's a, uh, that's, that pretty much sums up Tim Pool, I think. Colorado judge rejects Trump's bid to toss lawsuit aimed at keeping him off 2024 ballot. Yeah, I, I, if you put those words in that order, that, that is indeed what it says. I think Trump's argument is sound. OK, uh, based on what? Um, if you're going to also, where'd that come from? Well, you're just going to you're just throwing that in there like, I don't know. That sounds like, an, uh, 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 did you see the title of that? Obviously, the system is rigged against him. Accuse someone of insurrection, then they have to have due process determining they waged insurrection. No, no. You can also give aid and comfort to the enemy during an insurrection where you don't even have to participate in. You can house them. You can offer them comfort. As a matter of fact, all the promises to, uh, to pardon all the Jan Sixers, that's enough. That's aid and comfort. If I'm president again, once I get in office, I'm going to let you fuckers out. That's, that's enough. He said it. He'll say it today. You don't even have to fucking convict him. He'll say it again. Suing without having a determination of insurrection. A determination of insurrection. The argument they're making is, no, 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 we'll determine that. For the record, uh, Trump's dick is supposedly so small that you couldn't determine an, a, any kind of a direction at all. It's just not possible. I mean, we have the technology, but the web telescope is pointed away from the earth. So I here and now. Michigan judge declines Trump's request to toss lawsuit to remove him from the ballot. Michigan judge. Oh, yeah. And PBS mentions that Minnesota. Are these all PBS? Is that his only source? Is next. A week long hearing on one lawsuit. Colorado got underway while on Thursday, oral arguments are scheduled before the Minnesota, Minnesota Supreme Court in an effort to kick the Republican former president off the ballot in that state. Next up, of course, is Michigan. It was already Michigan. That was that one was Michigan. It says, see, it says Michigan right there. Unless you mean next up, next up what you're reading or it's happening concurrently. I'm just saying they're on. Yeah. A judge on Wednesday. This is from. Last Wednesday, I'm assuming. Um, uh, let me get the date here. Uh, October 28th. Yeah. So not this Wednesday, not the November 1st, but the other Wednesday. So I'm just saying I have an issue with next up. Anyways, this is last week. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. Rejected former President Donald Trump's request to dismiss a lawsuit that seeks to force him off the 2024 ballot in Michigan. Court of Claims Judge Robert Robert Redford. What a name. Yeah, I've never heard it before, but it sounds like he sounds like a handsome guy. Denied the request and turned down Trump's motion to be party to the lawsuit, citing the court's limited jurisdiction. In the order, Redford wrote that Trump does not fall in the definition of the state or any of its departments or officers. <laughs> this is just amazing. Why? Do you think he's still president? The judge, however, repeated his invitation to allow Trump to respond to the lawsuit in an amicus brief. Right. Because people are talking about you. They're not suing you directly. That makes absolute sense. That's how this works. They're trying to remove Trump's name from the ballot and saying, right, Trump's not part of the lawsuit. Yeah, he's not. He doesn't have a say in it in this particular instance because it's it's kind of like um, a group of people 
have uh, are seeking to have a um a known child molester let's say just or how about this somebody who partied with a known child molester for two decades i don't know who that would be you can pick any number of people and uh they're wanting him to not uh be able to live you know even though he's not a convicted sex offender he he was seen driving the guy around they hang out he's he's he he fucks around the guy's garage all the time and then they you know they have parties at, at his house with that guy over there and then he's flown to his island a couple times and uh and there a bunch of people in the from the school board and other places get together and they file a lawsuit that um this guy should not be able to live within 500 yards of a school uh, because he you know because of who he's associated with and that and he can't go I'm being found guilty of child molestation without you. And they're no, this is a zoning argument between the city and these people. The city will ultimately make a determination whether or not that's allowed. His guilt or innocence doesn't even play in that part of it. It's about that rule and his qualifications for that rule. And you could say, I don't qualify because of this, this, and this. And that's the amicus brief. Trump's lawyers argue that it is. You have to do air quotes when you say Trump's lawyer. It's manifestly inappropriate to remove him from the ballot. And you know what's manifestly inappropriate? Grabbing women by the pussy. I'm just going to say that uh, without permission. It's uh, manifestly appropriate if they insist. That neither state officials nor the court should have the authority to take such action. This is, this is very clever on the part of the Democrats. Don't sue Trump. Oh, you mean that whole like actually using what the Constitution says and then letting Trump pick his own lawyers instead of like giving him a public defender or something like that, where they might actually do some fucking work. Trump, and don't give Trump standing to sue back. Sue the state for incorrectly listing him. And Right, that's how that's always works. And then the state is the party, not Trump. Community activist Robert Davis filed the lawsuit in September. You, you get a feeling this is like, um, like Tim Pool at some point is going to go, God damn, I'm stupid. I mean, I really don't process information well. And my dad is really bright. Both of my parents are. I'm going to go have a DNA test. And then he finds out he's, he's Glenn Beck's kid. <laughs> that's what I, I feel like that's the arc. If this was a Lifetime movie, that's where this is going. <laughs> dad, I always knew it. 15th to force Trump off the ballot. Arguing the former president is ineligible to run for office again because of Section 3, 14, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Davis applauded Redford's decision. It's quite obvious the attorneys have been retained by the former president are unfamiliar with Michigan law. They don't understand the limited jurisdiction of the court of claims. They also seem not to understand the meaning and importance of the oath of office established by the Michigan and U.S. constitutions. Mm -hmm. Davis filed the lawsuit again. Yeah, that's the whole portion of this is where he took an oath already and then he violated the oath. So this is really about his violating the oath and whether or not the party that is suing to get him off the ballot can show that he violated the oath. Because it's not his opinion about whether he violated the oath that matters. It's whether they can show it in the court. Against Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson after she declined his request. To also, there's hours of this fuckhead, uh, Trump, I mean, not this fuckhead, the other fuckhead, saying that he would pardon the Jan Sixers who were in jail for the insurrection attack. So that in and of itself, like, again, aid and comfort, that's all you need. Remove Trump from the ballot. Benson argues she doesn't have the authority to do so. You see? Where are the Republicans at? Um, I, I, I'm, I, They're busy, you know, telling everybody how much they're going to turn on the new speaker. This is amazing. Is it, though? The judge scheduled an emergency hearing on the matter for November 6 in the Michigan Court of Appeals courtroom in Grand Rapids. Davis said it is pretty bizarre that Trump is essentially arguing he is not beholden to the Constitution, which he's not. Okay, well, shit. I didn't realize he wasn't a U.S. citizen and, and that he uh, wasn't arguing that he wants to be president of the United States, which is the single highest office that is beholden directly to the Constitution. It is the main, it is the shepherd of the fucking Constitution. What the fuck you mean he's not? The arguments that the former... I, again, what the fuck was that? I mean, that drop of everything this dickhead has said so far is fucking amazing. Trump is essentially arguing he is not beholden to the Constitution, which he's not. The fuck? What are you talking about? Where did that come from? Of course he is. The whole point of this is that he took an oath and broke it. That's what the 
fucking 14th Amendment is about. It's, it, it doesn't even apply to people who didn't take an oath. That's why Confederates, that's why the language allowed for Confederates to come back in because they, you know, a lot of the Confederates, they might have been young enough where they joined dur went, during the separation of the South and they might, you know, don't consider themselves, you know, citizens of the United States of America and they were under, they believe they were under the Confederate uh, Constitution, any of that shit. That, that gave, uh, that's, that's why it opened up the gates for people for reunification. The arguments that the former president's legal counsel, okay, I, I'm just going to pause right here. Yeah, pause, because uh, you're losing everybody, especially with that whole Donald Trump is not a subject to the Constitution. There's no legal basis for Trump having committed insurrection. There uh, aid and comfort. You don't, it, it, you don't have to be an active agent of it. In the same way that Trump says he's not a Russian agent, nobody thinks he is. He's a Russian asshat. He's not, they're using him. He's a, he's a useful idiot, but he, they're not like he's a super spy. There is no legal basis. Trump has not actually been indicted or charged. Yeah, he doesn't have to be. He gave aid and comfort as somebody who's taken an oath to people who attack the, the, the con congressional duties that are essential to our democracy. Uh, yeah. And he, he said he would get them out of jail if he's ever president again. That in and of itself, he would supersede the courts on their behalf. That's Aiden Comfort. With insurrection. Okay. Okay. Fine. 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 Fuck it. Taking the beanie off. This is it. We should have every Republican file the same things against literally insert all Democrats. Yeah. Just do that. Cause that'll, yeah, that's not lawfare. Every single one. Um, look, I know, uh, I know, you know, they're not busy governing, but I think some of them have, they've got wives and mistresses and hidden children. And, uh, some of them live on the DL. It's a, it's a lot to juggle. And you want to add on top of that, putting, uh, filing useless lawsuits everywhere. I don't know. I just don't see it happening. Use the arguments they're making in the exact same way. Yeah, but you're going to, but first, first, you have to coax Joe Biden into building a time machine. Wait with me. Um, and, I mean, he would make a great Doc Brown if he just didn't comb his hair anymore. And then uh, goes back in time and participates in the insurrection. And, and, and there's f pictures of him nailing the wood together for the gallows. Eh? That would work. And then uh, with Hunter, of course, they're you know, like making it rain while he does it with uh, Chinese Yuan. That does you just... That'd be good. And then, uh, and then use that, use those pictures and then, uh, file, uh, that just for, you know, shits and giggles. Hold on. And then argue what you want is insurrection. That's it. Yeah, except... You're going to have to weigh that against people who actually stormed up the Capitol during the counting of the Electoral College votes and tried to put a stop to it by attacking police officers. Find a conservative jurisdiction to agree with you. Kamala Harris solicited donations to far left extremists who were firebombing the White House. Uh, no, that wasn't she wasn't trying to actually do that. She was just trying to bail out protesters who she believed were innocent and we're not participants in the riot. That was what it was for. It wasn't so that they could get another shot at throwing shit at the White House again. Again, uh, it, a, a little reminder, um, this dipshit and uh, all of his friends, uh, with the exception of maybe the one hippie dude that's in his, the nihilist that's in his crowd, um, thinks that Kamala Harris, that, that Trump was going to be able to run to the left of Kamala Harris on criminal justice reform. <laughs> they gave it the, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a stretch, right? Well, of course. She's, she's it's not a stretch. It's Tim. It's not a stretch, buddy. No, don't say stretch. It's not a stretch. It's a, it's, a, it's a dumb idea. It's just dumb. Stretch means there's still some tension there that, between it and the truth. This is completely severed. You've cut the treacle solicited donations to the Minnesota bail fund to bail out George Floyd rioters. Really? Or protesters? Do you, you think they made the distinction? Or? Uh, but during the George Floyd riots, many of these people who helped organize this, you know, it's part of a bigger, there you go. It's part of a bigger, there you go. 
None of it involved uh, storming state houses and trying to stop our democracy at all. I mean, it, you could argue that uh, there's an element of states' rights in the fact that if they, if some of these folks attacked uh, police departments or even city halls in places, uh, that those folks uh, would be under state law. Um, I think the, you, you might have a case against some of the people in Portland who attacked the federal building there, but I would, I would also argue that a good portion of them didn't know what building they were attacking, just that it looked big and government looking. My point is this. <laughs> it's covered by your beanie. You can make all the arguments in the world that you want. That's what the left is doing. The no, it seems like they're making one argument that, uh, Donald Trump provoked the January 6th attack on purpose over a series of days, set his supporters loose on it, took down the magnetometer so that uh, the, the uh, metal detectors so that people with guns wouldn't be detected, told them to walk down there peacefully and patriotically, which is his equivalent of don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes, and said, you're going to have to fight or we're not going to have a country left if, if Mike Pence doesn't do the right thing. And then about the time they get there, he's tweeting Mike Pence didn't have the, right, the guts to do the right thing. That would be... Uh, that, that was the process. It's very different than a bunch of people, uh, you know, half of them were marching and half of them broke off and set fire to a target. And some of the people who were just marching got arrested with the people who burned the target. And therefore, they set up a bail fund to get people out who were just protesting. And some of the there was some overlap between those two groups. The right should make the same arguments. Joe Biden's never been convicted of insurrection. Neither is Trump. So just say it in court. Yeah, but also uh, Joe Biden has never promised to pardon people who attacked the Capitol. Force Joe Biden to respond. Now, the reason. Yeah, you, you want what do you want him to do? Laugh into a microphone on his way to the helicopter? <laughs> Seriously, because that's that will be the response. The reality is, I think they want Joe Biden off the ballot anyway. So the best. Yeah, keep telling yourself that, dummy. This thing for Donald Trump is to keep Biden on the ballot, in which case I can understand why they're not filing. Yeah, that's why. They want Joe Biden on the ballot. Okay. So then start filing against Gavin Newsom. This is the challenge, right? No, I don't know what the fuck. I'm okay, I'm bored. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's Tim Pool, uh, the man who was born to be but hurt. Seriously. Seriously? Seriously. Seriously, guys. He's serious. He's seriously saying seriously. He was born. Everything that happens uh, crawls up his ass and lays an egg, apparently. It's, it's, it's kind of cute. But again, uh, I, I, look, I, I don't know how to, I can't relate to the guy. I just can't. I mean, I, I've had long hair. I've had short hair. I've had, you know, buzzed sides. I've uh, a ponytail. I do elf hair. I, I'm all over the map. I have yet to wear a hat on the show. I might even start, but none of that would affect my ability to do my show. Uh, but the day Tim Pool takes his beanie off, show's over. Oh, thanks, uh, CSL. Another tidbit. I'm very excited. What could that be? Oh, that's what's so exciting. Um, because Discord got shut down and I hit it before. Okay. Um, because uh, my next one up is, uh, I go, are you meant to block the vines ability to appoint people to certain positions? Uh, before agree. Oh, Ted Cruz, um, is, is, oh, I see. Nice. Um, I may get to that. I'll, I'll pop it on there. Hold on one second. And I'll just hang on to it in the interim. But my next one is, I got it. Hold on. There's so much. Okay, here it is. So this one, this one's, Seldom, my friends, and I, I would like to increasingly do this, uh, seldom do we get a clip that's just straight from the floor of the House or the Senate. Piece of new, a news bit, not, not news being told by the Judge Janines of the world, but the news as it happens. And this would be uh, the situation with uh, um, uh, Chris Ray, the Trump appointee, and uh, the third Johnson I don't know, of the Johnson boys. And uh, Ron Johnson of Wisconsin, um, who is actually, who says, uh, must, this is the title is, must watch. So we gotta, I'm sorry, we don't have a choice. Forbes is forcing us. FBI's Ray and Ron Johnson, uh, Ray clash? Ron Johnson, Ray, wait, they're married? 
Oh my God. I didn't realize Ron Johnson was a hyphenate. FBI's Ray and Ron Johnson's Ray. Wait, Ron Johnson has a Johnson Ray? That sounds painful. About FBI's handing. Ooh, I guess he does. <laughs> of Biden family probe. Hello. I don't even know how you. Boom uh, River. There's a handing of the Biden probe. Um, shit. That's amazing. Must watch FBI's Ray and Ron Johnson Ray clash about FBI's handing. I'm, are we sure that Lauren Boebert isn't in this clip? Um, a Biden family probe. Which is, River. I don't know what kind of, I don't, I don't know which probe they're talking about. There's a Watch lot. Your shorts and bend over much of a bar. But uh, eventually, <laughs> eventually, uh, we'll, well, I guess we'll find out watching. You know what I mean? I don't want to, I don't want to bury the lead. Let's, let's hear it. Okay, here we go. Um, this is uh, Ron to the Johnson Ray. Now, Director Ray. Oh, by the way, he starts out showing this is a uh, DACA announcement, and supposedly that's what causes this spike in things because people are going to stay. Obama declares humanitarian uh, crisis, which there was, and there's these spikes, but whatever. But humping along really low, and then the uh, the hold on, let me back the fuck up because there's the chart. This is uh, the encounters. Um, now there are two factors in the encounters. So, so, Southwest uh, border encounters. Two factors in the encounters. One uh, is we're encountering them. So the agents are actually encountering these people. They are stopping them or seeing them or arresting them or, uh, you know, like putting them in buses and taking them someplace. That's an encounter. They're not just seeing them. They're not slip buys. These aren't the sneak buys. You could argue that there were a bunch of slip buys right around here during the Trump uh, era. And the rest of this is, uh, whatever. Anyways, um, there's uh, obviously 2020. And then there's this kind of snapback balance of, the, of after 2020. But the the wall is there funneling people through a narrower gap. In the narrower gap, there are CBP people and they see them. they And they round them up or they catch them or whatever. So the the number of encounters is up because we have, that means they're seen. This is like their problem with the word seized. All this fentanyl was seized at the border. Okay. Um, would you rather it not be seized? Yes, because, you know, the, the Trump drug family uh, makes uh, millions of dollars every second on it. Anyways, um, and the other one is, uh, that goes into encounters, is the number of people coming, which is not something anybody has control over. And again, if you hear someone saying the border is open, it's a Republican. The only people saying worldwide that the U.S. border is open and, and we don't check people and people just flow in is a Republican. No Democrat is saying that. Now, Director Ray, I'm assuming you've seen and read the letter that Senator Grassley wrote to you. Don't make an ass out of you and, uh, and the people from Maine. Attorney General Garland on October 24th. I'm generally aware of it. Oh, you are. Oh, you. Oh, oh, you're aware. Oh, you're aware. Well, they do send me a fucking letter every three days, and it's all the same bullshit. Or read it. Let me read some segments to you. Uh, the FBI maintained over forty confidential human sources that provided. I uh, quick, okay. criminal information related to Joe Biden, James Biden, and Hunter Biden. An essential question that must be answered in this is why won't those people? Go public. Is it because we'll find out it's 40 different offices across the country and the same five people and they all work with Rudy Giuliani? Nah. Did the FBI investigate the information or shut it down? Certainly there's a host of reasons, a host. reasons to conclude that they attempted to shut it down. Uh, no. Well, there might have been one big reason that they were all presenting copies of the Rudy Giuliani hard drive that he purchased from Russians in Europe uh, that he was, you know, banding about and saying it has child porn, which is why he was copying it and disseminating it to all of his friends. Uh, but they might have dropped that off. And since there's no chain of evidence on it and there's no, the data on it is so flawed that if it actually worked its way into any Hunter Biden case, it would, it would, cause a cascading effect across all the evidence and get the case thrown out. So if anybody actually wanted to prosecute Hunter Biden, they wouldn't want to be anywhere near that bullshit hard drive. 
goes on. It has been alleged that the basis for well, there was a sniff shutting down the investigative activity, uh, shutting it down was an August 2020 assessment created by FBI Supervisory Intelligence Analyst Brian Auten. That fucker. That assessment was used by FBI headquarters team to improperly discredit. A lot of, lot of sniff, a lot of big sniffs, a lot of big Trump. I know I'm bullshitting, but I'm trying to blaze through this and and appear manly. Credit negative Hunter Biden information is disinformation and caused investigative activity to cease. It goes on. Analyst Brian Otten opened the aforementioned assessment, which was used by the Foreign Influence Task Force to seek out CHS holdings at FBI field offices across the country relating to the Biden, Biden family and falsely discredit them as foreign disinformation. My, my staff caused that catch and kill. And by the way, it was... No, that's what uh, David Pecker at the Inquirer was doing for Donald Trump. Um, but again, if any of the material from the alleged laptop made its way into any of the actual Hunter Biden cases or even Joe Biden or James Biden cases, it would it would cause a fruit of the poison tree cascade across all of it and get the whole thing thrown out. That same task force that gave Senator Grassley and I our unsolicited briefing that was later leaked. <laughs> An unsolicited briefing? That sounds painful. Leaked to the media to smear me. And oh my God. So, and you didn't even know this briefing was coming. You couldn't, you couldn't avoid this. And they just get, you got this unsolicited briefing and then they're going to smear you with it. How do they, how did they, how, how does that work? Impact uh, my 2022 election. Mm -hmm. Senator Grassley concludes, there appears to be an effort within the Justice Department and FBI to shut down investigative activity relating to the Biden family. Such decisions, such decisions. Such as, yeah, he, he, by the way, he's not making mistakes when he's reading. He's literally doing it in the style of Chuck Grassley, which is really hard to do like that, or you don't have a piece of wheat sticking out of your mouth like that. This point to significant political bias infecting the decision-making of not only the attorney general and FBI director, but also line agents and prosecutors. During the Trump administration, our republic cannot survive such a political infection, and you have an obligation to this country to clear the air. Let me ask another, and by the way, I'd ask that this Yamas consent, that this uh, letter be... You want Yamas consent? That's, uh, that's where all the yams in the room start swearing? Entering the record, and also this column that appeared in the Wall Street Journal published yesterday. Oh, you mean the mainstream media? Have you read this one? No. More on the stifled Hunter Biden probe. I have seen that. Okay. Uh, we'll enter that in the record. Again, this. More. Uh, I, by the way, if I was Ron Johnson, I would take uh, offense at being called a moron by the Wall Street Journal. This is a column is written based on the October 23rd Judiciary Committee interview with former U.S. Attorney Scott Brady, who was, Brady, who was whatever tapped by Attorney General Barr to vet information related to Ukrainian corp corruption and pass along credible material to offices with ongoing investigations. I'll get some highlights here. Sure, could you do that? Yeah, that's, that's great. And uh, Barr pointed this guy. Okay, here we go. The FBI office in Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh? Couldn't take any steps without the review and approval of FBI court headquarters. Uh, Mr. Br mm, I think, I think uh, how a piece of sweet grass or alfalfa, hence them calling us hayseeds. Yes, it's true, Jinx. Brady describes a reluctance on the part of F the FBI to really do any tasking related to allegations of Ukrainian corruption broadly, and then specifically. But but why why wouldn't they? They're in Pittsburgh, the very heart of all things Ukraine, and fucking places where Ukraine things happen. Why would why is the Pittsburgh field office holding out anything that intersected with Hunter Biden in his role in Burisma? FBI headquarters had to sign off on every assignment. Right, because it's nothing that came that pertained to that particular field office. And it is I don't know if you know this. I know you keep saying FBI very quickly, but you do recognize the F stands for federal. It is the federal Bureau of Investigation, not the PBI, which would be either the peanut butter investigative group, pig, pig, or 
Um, it's uh, the, the, the Pittsburgh Bureau of Investigation. No matter how small or routine, and that this sometimes required 17 different people, mostly at the headquarters level. Yeah. Gee, it sounds like a large government agency. And Mr. Brady said he'd never in his DOG career seen anything. Wait, he's worked with Snoop Dogg? Hold on. He, where was his career? Headquarter level. And Mr. Yeah. Brady said he'd never in his DOG career. Snoop D-O-G. Dog, diggy, dog, diggy, dog, diggy, dog, into the Pittsburgh, dog, diggy, dog. Um, it's DOJ. <laughs> Just saying. D-O- D-O-G spells something else. <laughs> I've seen anything like it. Well, you know, uh, uh, and he's seen a talking dog. He worked for one, apparently. Mr. Brace. He, this, this is a man who worked for a talking dog. <laughs> and he's never seen anything like this. Are you sure he wasn't smoking evidence in the Hunter Biden case? He says his office was informed by members of the Pittsburgh FBI team that they'd been instructed by headquarters not to affirmatively, be sh affirmatively share information with the Brady team. Uh, he said he was surprised to learn of the, that the FBI possessed the Hunter Biden. The Brady team? And laptops. And it's, it, I think their official title is Bunch. I, I don't want to. Since 2019, he heard that through public reports. Oh, did he? Uh, Senator Grassley's letter concludes. If you don't get off my lawn, I'm going to do something about it, sailor. That he has obtained names from his whistleblower, 25 Department of Justice FBI personnel, to interview at a future date. And Great. Let us know how that works out. All 25 of them. Bring them in there. I'm sure it'll be lightning. Is he also requesting a bunch of information? Will you a bunch? Shit. Did anybody bring the basket? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, technically speaking, this is my best Christopher Ray, by the way. Um, sorry. Uh, usually, if, if we're if you request a uh, bunch of information, then we have to put it in a basket. Uh, if you want a lot, obviously, we can put it out in the middle of uh, you know in the parking area where everybody goes, or um, you know, um, it, please just don't ask for a shit ton because the truck that we use for that is on loan and it needs to be washed. Will you provide those FBI personnel for interviews with his office and mine, and will you provide that those documents? Well, I'll have to review the specific requests, and we'll see how we can be helpful. Okay, well, I'll hand you this letter. He already has the letter. Final point I want to make. I was briefed a couple weeks ago by members of the FBI on what Senator Blumenthal... Was it a drive-by briefing? ...are doing to try and unredact a lot of the information on the 9-11 event, okay? The 9-11, the not a 9-11. Uh, okay. The briefers seem to be people of integrity, like I think the vast majority of, of the... Yeah, that, they, they, that's a good thing about the FBI. Lots of... The, the briefers over there, they're fabulous. Fabulous. Briefed like you've never been briefed before. Like, people can't even believe it. It's a disgrace that people can't be briefed more often about it. And interestingly enough, uh, briefed about 9-11, they've gotten really good at it ever since uh, George W. Bush ignored his presidential daily... Fuck, what's that word? I'm losing it again. It's a uh, card situation, calendar, reminder, fact sheet. Fuck, I'll remember it later. Men and women that work in the FBI, the 38,000 field agents. So again, they... Yeah, it's just like eight assholes. Everybody else is great. They were people... They're great! I mean, they obviously, when they were told to raid Mar-a-Lago, they just were sniffing Mar uh, Melania's panties and, and stealing, you know, I don't know, what, what Baron's uh, big transformer that he had for years that he still really likes because it's a collector's item. Integrity. The problem is that they gave me three different examples of redacted and then unredacted to explain it. And the redactions made sense of those three examples, but I had to make the point. The problem I have is I simply cannot trust what the FBI is providing me. And I Jesus Christ. It, this asshole is getting briefed materials, redacted and unredacted, and he can look at the fucking documents and he's like, I don't trust it. That's not what that really said. I can't trust the FBI because... That's the line Vladimir Putin pays me to say. I don't say that with any joy in my heart. I, that's uh, no, but some cash in your bank account, though. It's a travesty. The American people want to believe and have trust in the FBI. We want. Yeah, I, I, honest to God, 
unless you're a complete fucking lunatic, most people, when the FBI releases a an unredacted version of a document, most of us are pretty good that it's it's the unredacted version of that document. The fuck is this asshole talking about? Does he think they typed up some other version of it because he was so convinced? It, like, I, I, there are so many references bouncing through my head that I can make right now, but the, some of them are a, a bit messy and difficult for the internet, so I'll, I'll save them for in person. I want in credibility and integrity restored to your institution. But yeah, hey, fuckhead. Their integrity at, is not predicated on how paranoid and full of shit you are. You do realize that, right? The reality and whether or not people are going to, you know, are out to get you or lie to you or trying to trick you um, is either a material truth in that situation or you're just a fucking lunatic. You're just a fucking lunatic. <laughs> but Director Ray, you have not done that since assuming office. And I, I could go. Hey, he's a Trump appointee. What do you want? They all suck. Go through a long laundry list of the reasons why. That do it. Whip it out, dude. That trust has been violated. Why? Because you trusted him to cover Trump's ass? I don't have it right now. I'm happy to sit down. Obviously, you don't have it right now. And, and, you, and that's not the kind of thing you can commit to memory because, uh, I mean, there's so many of them. And uh, off the top of my head, though, there's like hundreds. I can think of like, I mean, three would kind of solve it in this situation. But then you'd get to answer those things and everybody here would see that I'm pulling this out of my ass. I want to meet with you and go over these things in detail. But Why, why are you afraid to do it in public, Ron Johnson? I would say, because they asked me, what can you, we do to restore trust? Um, here's what I suggest. I think you get up from your chair right now. Walk out. You up, be careful. Walk around to the outside of this. Uh, Christopher Ray and his lawyers can stand up. They'll walk around to the pit, the pit where the camera guys are. And they'll all stand in a line. You just turn around and fall backwards. I'm sure they'll catch you. I'm not kidding. I'm certain they'll catch Start you. Start being transparent. My final point is... Also, uh, you can't ask a law enforcement entity that goes after organized crime and serial killers and domestic terrorists to be transparent. There's a limit. Same thing with the CIA. That's why they make a perfect fucking target. Because you can paint over all the gaps in your knowledge and everything in it is... It's fucking a, a massive plot. They must be up to something. I can't see this part. Well, if you could see this part, so could the very people they're trying to keep from killing you. Ah, whatever. Now, this is actually a question. <laughs> Can you kick my ass? Why is it? And this makes no sense. I mean, the elected U.S. Senator. I have yes, I agree. I agree. Yes, this is true. I think we all agree this. It makes no sense that you're an elected U.S. Senator. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a fucking mystery, pal. <laughs> the highest security clearance. No, not the highest. Why is it that unelected members of the FBI can see the documents unredacted, but I can't even in a secure briefing room? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Because uh, internally in law enforcement, uh, to isolate these cases so that they can be devoid of political influence, uh, agents who sworn an oath to protect the Constitution, specifically to their oath as in law enforcement, have to keep them separate from just, you know, turnstile elected representatives unless it's specific to an, a direct oversight. Just because you want to thumb through the case against one of your buddies doesn't mean you get to. That makes no sense. What's it makes a lot of sense. It's pretty fucking normal, dumb dumb. But that's exactly how federal law enforcement, Department of Justice, the FBI, who are the law. Right. My, my, yeah. And you are a, quote, lawmaker. So how about you get at that? And here's a good idea. Go read the law. Because it's, it's not Christopher Ray's decision to let you see shit or not let you see shit. Remain above the law remain above scrutiny, and completely scorn. He is, he is, you know, I, I don't want to uh, interrupt you, uh, kind of do, but whatever. Um, you do realize, 
Um, he's there so that you can scrutinize him and you're just talking. Like you read letter, a letter in part of a Wall Street Journal into the, part into the, um, into the record. But you're not scrutinizing him. You're just saying what you think or your own fucking paranoid fantasies. Our constitutional... Our constitutional... Our constitutional response... Our constitutional... Responsibility and authority to provide oversight. We just can't do it as the chairman was talking about earlier. Yeah, but you don't get to micromanage legal cases. That's not part of your oversight. You don't get to, like, barge in... Elected representatives don't get to barge into the fucking DOJ and go, let me see what cases you got. Put, throw them on the table. I'm going to read through all these. Some of them involve your state and your business. I don't give a fuck. Let me see them. About how you've basically ignored his requests for credit for the requests for the record. Mr. Chairman, may I respond? You may. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole por- point of this, I think. Uh, so even though Ron Johnson doesn't seem to want you to do it. Needless to say, I disagree with your characterization, uh, not only of my own performance, but of our workforce. Uh, I will tell you, when it comes to trust and confidence, the number of people applying to be special agents of the FBI has gone up dramatically since I've been... Since Donald Trump left. ...an FBI director. And in fact, in your home state of Wisconsin, it's gone up about 160-something percent, which is one of the highest in the country. So I see... an. We have to turn them down, though, because they're all oddly lactose intolerant and are just looking to move out of state. FBI every day that conducts themselves with integrity and professionalism. Yeah, but how am I supposed to know that? You guys won't let me look at stuff. Sorry, I was channeling Chuck Grassley there for a second. And selflessness and rigor. Uh, And I do not accept the characterization of our performance in this particular case. That is not how I characterized it. yeah, you did. Let me, let me, partisanship may I finish, at the top Mr. with some specific partisan actors. I, I said the vast majority. Of the- here's here's the stupid part. This is fucking. This is the this is the fucking nut of the whole thing. This asshole and Don Jr. does it too. So does Trump. Wants to talk about the the you know the rank and file of the FBI are all good people, honest people doing an honest day's work. They're just doing their thing or whatever. There's just a few at the top that are totally fucking corrupt. And you know this, and it's all over, and everybody knows it. That's the thing. But these rank-and-file agents are carrying out the orders of these people up top, and yet they're still considered by you to be of integrity and and good people and all that kind of stuff. If they're knowingly and willfully taking orders that you believe to be unconstitutional and carrying them out, then they're as guilty as the person above them, unless you're doing this fucking, I was just following orders nonsense. Fuck off. Everybody but the people I see on TV are good people. And then the minute I see any of you other fuckers on TV, you're now bad. It's just dumb. 30,000 are people of integrity. And the- right, yeah. 30,000 people of integrity carrying out the mission of eight people who are enemies of the state. So the poor FBI agents that are just accidental enemies of the state. Get fucked. The idea that I, as a Republican appointee and a lifelong Republican, am biased in the way that you are describing makes absolutely no sense. I'm happy to read you chapter and verse of all the reasons why. Do it. Do it. That credibility has been destroyed. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, With me, because I don't trust the FBI because they keep looking at all the shit I'm doing. All right. So that's... uh, Chairman, that's, uh, that's, Secretary oh, Marcus, I think you're familiar. Oh, with- shut up! Um, yeah, Ron Johnson, everybody. Whew. Fuck, that's dumb. Um, speaking of fuck, that's dumb. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that used to be my uh, Joe Biden impersonation back during Ob- the Obama years. His big thing was, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but uh, now it's a whisper. That's the, the new affectation. But this is, uh, this is Turd Cruz over here, a uh, Canadian Manchurian candidate sent by uh, the, you know, the British to, uh, I don't know, sneak around behind the scenes looking like a, a besuited jihadist. I don't know. Um, so, uh, seriously, if, if, if Ted Cruz, if somebody put a turban on Ted Cruz and he saw himself in a mirror, he'd immediately hate himself more than he does now. All right, here we go. So this is uh, breaking news. Ted Cruz attempts major new attempt. Attempts major new... Att- fuck. Somebody's drunk at Forbes. 
<laughs> Somebody at Forbes is really patow. Um, breaking news. All right, so far so good. All caps, very Trump, but whatever. That's fine for breaking news. Ted Cruz attempts major new attempt. He's attempting an attempt. This is getting serious now. To blunt Biden powers. <laughs> I'm, I'm Ted Cruz and I'm, 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 I'm Biden kryptonite. Attempts to attempt. He's going to attempt to attempt. This is. I rise to speak about the need to protect the Senate's constitutional authority uh, by breaking the rules and not. What was I supposed to do before I did the thing that I didn't do that I was supposed to do? By the way, nice gray suit. By the way, you don't look at all like a <clears throat> like an assistant manager, assistant to the assistant manager. Oh, will the senator call up his amendment? Like a fucking professional. He's new. He doesn't really know how shit works. Mr. President, I call up my amendment number 1296 and ask that it be reported by number. In a, uh, the correct rule report. Senator. In a, under the pre. The senator from Texas, Mr. Cruz, for himself and Ms. Lummis, proposes amendment number 1296 to amendment number 1092. Okay, under the previous order, there will be now 10 minutes of debate equally divided. The senator from Texas. Mr. President. Okay, now, can we get on with this? I rise to speak about the need to protect the Senate's constitutional authority to advise and consent on presidential nominations. To advise and consent on presidential nominations. I'm excited. This is going to be great. Okay. With his appointment of multiple acting officials to perform senior roles that would otherwise require confirmation by this body, President Biden is deliberately circumventing the Senate. Oh, I see. So uh, Ted Cruz is is butthurt that um, that Biden is doing temporary appointments when they are blocking his appointments so that there are people in there to fill the jobs because the whole goal, Ted Cruz's entire goal and, and indeed the Republican Party's entire goal is to um, create dysfunction in the government and then say that the government can't function. And the nomination process. But yeah, Trump did this. Everybody has to do this. If you're not going to if you're not going to bring them to the floor and, and, and approve them or you're going to put anonymous holds like Tuberville is doing on, on the fucking military uh, promotions, that kind of shit, then the, 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 there has to be a workaround. Anybody who tries to work around, they're like, you're trying to stop us. You're like, no, no, okay. In some instances, these are vacancies of President Biden's own making. He has routinely nominated individuals with no relevant experience to key safety positions. To key safety positions and when threatened with the rejection of these unqualified nominees president biden simply withdraws their names from consideration and instead installs them in senate confirmed positions in an acting capacity until they have somebody to fill the role that they can get through the senate julie sue's tenure as the head of the department of labor oh terrible is a notable example Yes, yeah, she's, uh, she's a mother of three. What does she know about labor? I'm kidding. The recently reported elevation of Laura Daniel Davis. I see it. So it's, a, it's the women, I guess. Yeah? So, the, so women not qualified for security positions. Or I get you. And also labor is a security position? Whatever. To acting deputy secretary at the Department of the Interior. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We can't have a chick in there. Are you out of your fucking mind? If, if, if that, she'll let a buffalo in here. The Department of the Interior covers some of the state parks. Have you seen the size of these fucking things? Moose! <laughs> what a fucking asshole. Is another. Deputy... Wait a minute. What was the title again? Yes. Shit. To Acting Deputy Secretary at the Department of the Interior. Acting Deputy Secretary to the Department of the Interior. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That, that, she's six heartbeats away from Secretary of the Interior. And I saw her in a place she can't act. Is another. But I speak today about yet another case of this gamesmanship at mm. a key safety agency. Yes. Like Deputy Ass Assistant Deputy Secretary of the Interior. Where a rejected nominee. Dear God. Has been given the reins. Oh my God. The reins. The, uh, there's reins in this department. 
the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. <laughs> I was, uh, I gotta say, I was, I was a little bamboozled. I was a little tricked. I thought he was actually leading towards like some sort of <laughs> military role. And he was like, These are, that's chicken feed. But this, this dude wants to put a, a, a blind paraplegic who's afraid of flying in charge of the FAA. God damn it. She can't even operate a calculator. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> eh. Or NHTSA. Thank you for that. Thanks. How's it pronounced again? Sorry. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA. I would say it long. I would say it the long way is better. Earlier this year, President Biden nominated Ann Carlson to be the. Yep, it's another lady. This is. <laughs> You, does anybody know about the rule of three? One of the reasons why uh, threes work in jokes is because you set up two things and the brain expects consistency, so it expects the third to match the other two. And when it doesn't, you get a little titter, a little laugh, a little joke. And um, and then uh, there's there's also a, a, an element of that that works in uh, non-humorous situations, which is the belief in and the establishment of consistency. If you want to establish a pattern of something about the situation yourself or the other person, you put three things together and go, these th three things are indicative of something. And uh, so far, by my count, Ted Cruz seems to be concerned <laughs> that Biden is trying to put women in charge of deputy assistant secretary positions without Senate confirmation. And this lady one is going to head up NHTSA. Administrator of NHTSA. She, I'm sorry. What's her job? Earlier this year, President Biden nominated Ann Carlson to be the Ann Carlson, the administrator of NHTSA. She is an environmental law professor who has written for decades about how unelected bureaucrats should make major changes to American society in the name of combating global warming. I see. So she's an environmentalist. That's the word we would use. And uh, and so maybe maybe particularly she'd be great since we're putting in all these electric charging stations at looking at the nation as a whole and the the traffic patterns of it and going, this is where we need more, this is where we need less. You know, just, she might think that through, per perhaps. It's it's funny, it's this whole chick thing of like, you, you, ha you make kids and you want the world to be there when they grow up. It's fucked up, I know. But NHTSA is a safety agency. Okay. And uh, cars breaking down or... Uh, you know, in the middle of nowhere or not being able to go charge to charge or as we uh, increasingly see hydrogen vehicles on the road, um, rules about um, the standards by which the tanks on those cars will work or whether we end up getting solid state uh, batteries for, um, for uh, hydrogen is, you know, it's, we'll see. But Whose mission is to make American roads safer. R right. Yeah, yeah. And one of them, I'm just going to go out there is it, is uh, lower the, com the amount of, uh, the number of combustible cars on the road. It is not the EPA. Okay, I don't think she's trying to run it like the EPA, is she? And Ms. Carlson has zero road safety experience. She, she's she got a driver's license, doesn't she? I mean, Trump doesn't, but he was president of the United fucking States. It was immediately obvious to many, including myself. That she was female which is disqualifying because chicks can't drive. What do women know about driving cars? That she was- Seriously, this is so on the fucking nose. Not qualified for this position. And in the face of opposition from every Republican- Hold on. One second. Uh, for the twenty nineteen.
Hold on one second. Trump replaced uh, the NHTSA um, person under him. I'm trying to find... Uh, Um, let's see. I'm looking it up. Hold on one second. Da, ba, ba, bum, bum, ba, bum, bum. Nicole Nason was the person that uh, uh, George Bush put in. Um, which other, let's see. It, it's, who was placing a White House game? Uh, Ann Carlson, chief uh, agency chief counsel, named acting head of the NHTC. Uh, U.S. Transportation Pete Buttigieg said Carlson continued to serve as NHTC, but did not address why the nomination was drawn. Uh, da, 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 Carlson not respond. Da, da, da. Um, for after Stephen Clift, uh, sorry, Stephen Cliff, yeah. Hold on one second. Left in uh, copy. I think in uh, February twenty twenty one, uh, and the agency until he's confirmed. Okay, well, uh, during Trump, uh, no nominee was ever confirmed. Oh, I see. <laughs> so the the essence of it, it, this, let me show you real quick. This is pretty funny. So um, uh, Biden put a guy in there for uh, a short range, and, he, and then he moved on. But uh, check this out real quick. This is fun. During the Trump administration, no nominee was ever confirmed to head NHTSA, and there was no nominee for much of the four-year period. The Biden administration has struggled to win approval for many key transportation nominees in a closely divided U.S. Senate. The, Trump never even fucking tried. He just left the fucking... the. <laughs> He just left, he just raw dogged it the whole time. Get on the Commerce Committee and dozens of stakeholders because of her lack of experience. The president withdrew Ms. Carlson's nomination just two months after he submitted it. Yeah, Trump never even submitted anyone for that role. And, and by the way, one of the reasons is, is because the Ted Cruz is, uh, that are in the Senate put anonymous holds on people and try to shut shit down so that there's nobody running these organizations so they die on the vine. President Biden could have followed his withdrawal of Ms. Carlson's nomination with the appointment of a qualified individual to lead NHTSA. No, because that would mean that you guys would be, uh, you know, you wouldn't shadow ban, to use your word, your phrase, uh, and everybody puts up. He did just that with the FAA only last month and that nominee was confirmed. Right, it is the FAA though. I mean, nobody has to bring their car in for a landing, I'm just saying. But instead, President Biden turned- Hey, uh, let me guess, let me, let me guess, Ted. Uh, I, I'm gonna go out on a limb. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, interesting thing about, there's something different, Ted, about uh, the the Biden FAA head, the guy that Biden put up for the FAA, uh, and and the other uh, people that you're talking about, there was a some about that nominee. That guy, I, I, he he just jumped right there. Look at ninety eight to nothing. That motherfucker. Look at that. It, it proved him. It went right through. Yeah. Uh, nominee in the next administration, the FAA, testifies during a Senate committee, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, nominee head federal agent, Michael Whitaker, as the agency faces questions about blah, blah, blah. the FAA has been without a permanent head for more than 18 months. Uh, Whitaker said is uh, the agency addressed persistent air traffic controller shortage, spate of near-miss airplane accidents really drive the most serious ones down to the level of a zero. Uh, safety board is over again. Where is it? Thomas said the FAA... Um, uh, begin extending cuts and minimum flights, US Air, da, da, da. Whitaker said he was not involved in the certification of the Boeing 737 MAX when he was Deputy FAA Administrator. Um, so that's where he comes from. He's just moving up, which is fine. Unelected bureaucrats just getting better at their job all the time, like Turn assholes. Around and appointed Miss Carlson to the same position in an acting capacity in July. Ugh, the nerve. Promptly thereafter, she led the charge to effectively mandate Expensive mm. electric vehicles. Oh dear. Effectively mandating. Effectively mandating? Effectively. Effectively mandating doesn't sound like mandating to me. I gotta say. Sounds like bullshit. By proposing standards that stretch the agency's authority. By proposing standards? Chicks, am I right? Ladies, what's up? Far beyond what the law allows.
Oh, uh, so she proposed these things and they're far beyond what the law allows, then I guess the law would stop it so you don't have anything to worry about. I guess that's done, right? And as my committee has uncovered, Ms. Carlson has been involved in helping a for-profit law firm file dozens of nuisance suits across the country. Hmm. Is she is, is a, she's a slip and fall person? Is it how she made her fortunes? To try to bankrupt American energy companies. Really? That's uh, bankrupt them. How would, you, how would you go about bankrupting them? In, in Ted Cruz's mind, what would, what, what would activities, what, making them clean up whatever messes they make? Is that what you're talking about? Like making them responsible for the environmental damage done by pipeline leaks or the like? So they, it, but that's a nuisance. Then when it was pointed out how she used her position and her law school students to help, she tried to cover it up. Dear God. The stakes here are significant. Yes. What would happen if we don't have cars all over the place leaking oil onto asphalt roads? What if we were to come up with another material that's longer lasting and less environmentally damaging than asphalt at some point? Would we even be America anymore? Big government mandates for EVs threaten to make our nation less secure. You know, tanks don't have to be electric under this, right? As we rely on supplies controlled by China. You don't mean lithium, do you? Because I, I think it's more your concern is California, because that's where the biggest lithium deposit in the world was just found. Less productive as auto workers fear for their jobs. I'm sorry, are they not working? They're not going to work because they're scared? I got to say, this, this whole thing in the Republican Party about like auto workers are just too fucking dumb to make electric cars is driving me a little crazy. Less competitive as automakers seek to stay afloat after unprofitable investments. Ford is losing a whopping $36,000. $36,000? On every single EV sold. They're losing... $36,000 on every EV. So, so they're just giving them away? Is that how it works? And less prosperous as families pay more for cars they don't actually want. Yeah, I don't know. Fucking consumers, right? It's that consumer culture, right, Ted? It's just these fucking Americans don't know that the economy sucks and they keep buying shit that they don't want and they don't need. They just buy an electric car to park it across the street, just try to keep up with the electric Johnsons. Or even worse, which is a different device altogether. See their tax dollars spent on yet more bailouts. What, bailing out who? Congress must have a role in these kinds of far-reaching policies. And, oh, big government, you mean? And the officials who implement them. Well, yeah, but you have to, you have to actually have a hearing and get people through. And... The appointments clause of the Constitution is a critical check on executive power, the Senate must protect its prerogative to review the president's nominees to powerful unelected positions in the federal government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can review them, that's fine, but you can't stonewall them because the, you can't use that as a line item veto to destroy any system that you don't like. Some important protect protections already exist in law. The Vacancies Act sets rules for how a president may temporarily fill posts with acting officials. Right. Uh, when did this all go down? July, you say? One of the restrictions it imposes is that a person may not serve as an acting official once the president submits his or her nomination to the Senate for the same position. This rule protects the Senate's constitutional role. It yeah, but that's why he withdrew it. They didn't actually, he didn't do it against the, like, you, you guys didn't vet the person. You just stalled them applies to Miss Carlson's withdrawn nomination. Yeah, but that the problem with this is, and I would say the heart of the law, and this is what, what Ted Cruz is shooting for here, and it's a little stupid, uh, it's a lot stupid, is that uh, Ted Cruz basically says that like anytime they put somebody up that we don't like, 
We can just stonewall them, never give them a hearing, embarrass ourselves as to why we want them to not be in this position, namely chicks can't drive apparently, and what would what do women know about traffic safety, blah blah blah. But on top of that, it just just by it coming to the, you know, never even getting a hearing, if you remove it because they're never going to get a hearing, you can keep this person from getting the job. You get to stonewall the process simply by putting an anonymous hold on their confirmation. And the limited exceptions to the rule do not allow her to serve. I'm, uh, hi, uh, Big Stefan. I'm calling them chicks uh, in using the vernacular of how this uh, asshole is talking about the three women that didn't make it because pay attention to Commented jokes. As the acting head of NHTSA. Senator's time has expired. Yes, and uh, for the record, he spent the entire time, uh, it, it was a complete waste of time. It was not, it didn't help. Uh, it didn't, uh, all it did is reveal that he's a sexist asshole. This bill would enforce our advice and consent authority. Thank you. Mm, yeah, no, I, that, 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 that in and of itself, that's, that's fucking amazing. So the three examples he gives of people that didn't get the hearing and were rejected, uh, because they didn't get their hearing, because Biden put them in in acting positions. The people that he's got a problem with being in acting positions because they're not getting a hearing were all women. And the one guy he's like, we he put somebody up for this other role, and that guy got went that person went straight through. It turned out to be a male. Uh, I'm just saying, it's fucking stinks. The whole thing reeks. Um, I mean, it's no fucking surprise to anybody. But um, anyways, speaking, how much time do I have? Oh God, I'm behind on time. It's like it's. There's so much to cover, shit. Um, speaking of stinks, ladies and gentlemen, um, we got to cover some of the uh, the the old the old favorites, the old uh, heave ho. The uh, rep MTG calls for Biden to resign following direct evidence of money laundering, 200k to brother. Okay, uh, first of all, a loan to your brother uh, is not money laundering. Secondly, if I may, and I think I can, uh, for the record. Uh, what she is ultimately seeming to propose here, and what I've heard a lot of Republicans proposing around this, is that if they didn't have a contract between brothers that say, here's the loan, this is a loan, this is the this is the terms of the loan, and da, 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 that if you loan a family member money and they pay you back, if you don't have the paperwork around it, you're money laundering. I would love for them to make the case that the federal government wants to oversee every uh, internal family loan. Right? See what I mean? Please make that case to the American people, stupid. Please. For fuck's sake. All right, here we go. Uh, by the way, you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide. Like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. Uh, it, tomorrow is the first of the month, so it's a good day to become a Patreon subscriber. Patreon.com slash House Parks. Uh, you just do it tonight and then... Maybe tomorrow, I don't know, it helps me out, like a cup of coffee level or a little liar, whatever, uh, you know, you think I'm worth. No pressure. Okay, here we go. Also, Venmo. MTG calls for Biden to resign after direct evidence of I want that, the hot, hot, hot. money laundering. The congresswoman called on Biden to step down after the House Oversight Committee Which is hilarious. released damning evidence of uh, two hundred thousand dollars laundered through joe's bro jim right mm, no 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 it's money paid by his brother to him right. jim biden had received a payment of that amount from an influence peddling operation he can an influence peddling operation which by the way the company that gave money to james biden where that money went to joe um is suing James Biden because they they got no help from Joe. I'm not kidding. That's how this came to be. The reason they know about this money is because AmeriCorps, the company that worked with James Biden, loaned him money, and that he ended up paying off a loan that he'd gotten from Joe. He paid him back with money he got from them. Uh, if he was peddling influence, or they were under the impression that he was peddling influence, they got None. It's yet another case where it proves the exact opposite of what they've been saying. Conducted with Hunter Biden. And immediately after receiving the dirty money, he wrote a check to Joe. Now, this money... First of all, if you've got dirty money, you should launder it. It's filthy anyways. 
Money has a lot of germs on it, and in some cases, cocaine. Came from a failing hospital operator named AmeriCorps that was seeking political influence from the Biden family. No, no. You're almost there. Tell me how you know that. Tell me how you know that they were trying, they were seeking influence. Because they're suing James Biden because they didn't get it. That, my friends, is called money laundering. No, that that that's called uh, bearing false witness or uh, lying by omission. And bribery. Marjorie Taylor Greene says it's time for Joe to go. And yeah, but she's been saying that literally since she got before she got elected and before he actually got sworn in. She joins us right now. Congresswoman, thank you so much for pressing, keeping the heat on them like you always do. I yeah, that's right. She's so good. I thought that Joe never took a dime directly from any of these dirty <laughs> deals. Remember, that's what the corporate media has told us over and over and over again. Y yeah, that you still haven't proven that he has. That's right. And that's also what Joe Biden himself has told us, that he's never taken any money and that he knows nothing about his son's business deals. But James is his brother. But with the investigation that we have led on the oversight committee, we have uncovered real evidence. And that $200,000 check from his brother is exactly what you said, Gina. It's money laundering. He, OK, if it's if it's money laundering, work with me then James is the one laundering it th through Joe. Because AmeriCorps didn't want to pay Joe. They paid James and they didn't get anything from Joe. All right. And this should be no activity taking place by the president of the United States. The this is uh, This is when Trump was president. Former vice president or any office holder, as a matter of fact. Yeah, he wasn't holding office during this time. In fact, most people go to jail when they get caught for money laundering. Right, which uh, you should notice that Joe Biden's not in jail because you haven't caught him, quote unquote, money laundering. Joe Biden should resign. Uh, and if we can't. Just make his, my job easier. I can't prove any of this shit. Would he just please step down? Get him to resign, which I'm sure he won't. I am. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he won't. Hey, look at that. Look at us agreeing. I'm all in favor of impeachment. I have been in favor of impeachment ever since Joe Biden became president. Yeah, that that's meaningless. There's no doubt about that. You have been right at the front of this, uh, at, right from the very beginning, Congresswoman. You called it uh, and you knew something was fishy. You smelled it. So, well, uh, and, and if she smells something fishy, in all fairness, she may have just recently shaken hands with Lauren Boebert. Look. Um, so what about impeachment at this point? Where Now that uh, there's a Speaker of the House, where does the uh, House impeachment inquiry go from here? What's your sense of a time? I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to go with nowhere, but I'm, I'm I'm interested to hear what table this evidence. Uh, how is this going to proceed? What's your mm, you're presuming it's going Thanks. to. Well, the good news is, is we are still uh, proceeding with our impeachment inquiry. That is good news. That's the good news. Almost as much as our Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, we've never stopped. Uh, we still have more bank statements and records coming in from the. Very exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's like. Uh, it's like if they took the Untouchables, the movie, and took the the last ten minutes and stretched it into a mini series, and then ultimately Al Capone was found innocent. Subpoenas that we have sent out, and with Chairman Comer, we are mm. aggressively pursuing, following where the money leads, and that's exactly the best way to investigate it. That's how it is. It's so yeah, just follow the money. You know, it worked to get rid of Nixon, so it'll definitely. How we came across this two hundred thousand dollar check. Yeah. Again, no one is impressed. I got to tell you, not a Chinese company, an American company. No evidence whatsoever that they got anything from Joe. As a matter of fact, evidence to the contrary, that even if James was leading them on that they were going to get help from Joe, they never did and they sued him over it. And I'll let you know something. There's going to be more of those coming out. Oh, yeah. Out. But Really? 
more duds, terrific. What we have to do is we have to make sure that we line up the evidence because just because... How about, um, for the record, um, can we make a distinguish between what actually is evidence and what's just words? People like me and people like watching... There are no people like you, MTG. Except maybe the truck driver in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. In this program, do believe Joe Biden should be impeached. We have to have all Republicans vote for it. We need 217 votes. Yeah, it's not going to happen. On the House floor in order to impeach Joe Biden. Yeah, it's not going to happen. And in order to get them. Is that so that's is that why you're keeping George Santos? Because he's promised to vote for it. We have to produce the evidence to persuade. Yeah, that is true. That's the hard part. You should have you're kind of bearing the lead many Republicans to cast that vote for impeachment. As hard as uh, it may seem to us that they won't cast it now, we have to prove it to them and hope. Yeah, and it's, hey, you'll do it. We believe in you. It's only been fucking three goddamn years. Uh, hopefully that's what we'll be able to do. Hopefully. Oh, she's been hanging around with Comer. Hopefully. Hopefully. So... So you you got this two hundred thousand dollar check. You're calling it money laundering. You think he should be in jail, and you're using the word hopefully. The fucking nerve of this, uh, if I may. Say hopefully again, motherfucker, motherfucker. Say say hopefully again. Say hopefully again. Say hopefully again. Say hopefully again. Do I stutter, motherfucker? Say hopefully again. Just a quick follow-up, real quick. You better not say hopefully. Did you say that you expect more evidence showing that checks were written to Joe Biden? Is that what you're saying? Just uh, making sure that's what you're saying. No, you know what she's saying? You dumb son of a bitch. She's, yeah, it's me, Salty Cupcake, a.k.a. Samuel J. Cupcake. She's, she's saying, hopefully, motherfucker. Say hopefully again. Yes, I expect to see that. Oh, what do you expect? What's the expectation? Expectation is you believe something's going to happen, don't you? Don't you? That's right. Something's going to happen. You have an expectation. You know what that is? Sounds an awful lot like hope. Sounds an awful lot like you're about, you're trying to find another way to say hopefully again. Okay. Um, I'm glad you've like what, what the fuck are you talking about? Okay. Okay. That, that's what you're saying. You're fucking saying okay to me. Okay. Okay. Say okay again. Up that 217 number because we've been hearing that number over and over again. That's because they got 200. 18 people, and they need... What the fuck's wrong with you? As uh, this whole speak... This also happens to be my area code, ladies. ...debate took place, and ultimately the election of a new speaker. But we're not hearing a lot yet out of the new speaker. Uh, MTG wanted to give you a chance to tell us um, what you're hearing. What's he going to do first? When are we going to hear some fireworks out of this? Okay, let's hear it. I'm excited. Let's hear it. Let's, let's... What are... MTG, what are the fireworks? Well, um, our new speaker, Mike Johnson, has our, our new speaker hasn't been our speaker uh, for one week yet. Yes, we all know how a calendar works, dumbass. <laughs> and I will let you know he has been very busy uh, throughout the past week hiring. A it's pronounced busy. Up staff, the speaker of the house is a big job. Not only is it look how big could it be? Kevin McCarthy did it. Look, you can make it a big job. Obviously, Nancy Pelosi was fantastic. They do they perform at, uh, duties as Speaker of the House? They also have to manage the entire Capitol, including the security and the visitor center. That's why. Oh my God! So he's got to stand there all day handing out pamphlets too. That's exhausting. Why we always point to Nancy Pelosi for the security failure on January sixth because the Speaker of the House is in charge of that. It also is a big, no. big operation. And so Speaker Mike Johnson has been busy uh, 
getting into settling into his new role and we look for he's just settling in yeah it's a lot filling the uh, fridge with perrier and and finding the perfect uh set of indoor shoes so when he mr rogers it in the office he can put his feet up on the desk without scuffing the fucking thing forward to hearing more from him we did have a con we do i do you do we all do conference call the other night where Oh shit, real work, a conference call you say. You didn't zoom it. He talked about aid to Israel, uh, talked about the money that Joe Biden wants for Ukraine. Um, and and I'll Yeah, that you don't want because you're pro-Russian rape squad, gotcha. I'll go ahead and tell you guys, I'm against the foreign wars. Uh, I've sent no money to Ukraine. And I believe if we're going to send aid to Israel, I'd like to see the Democrats in the Senate pick up the defense and state and foreign ops bills and pass those because that has $3.8 billion ready to go to Israel to help them out with weapons. Yeah, but it cuts Ukraine aid. Defense and, and their iron. Because you're you're basically uh, shooting Peter to pay Paul. Dome. Uh, but the Democrats won't do anything about it and Joe Biden isn't interested. Oh no, they'll pick it up and they'll just put the Ukraine funding back in and you guys will have to vote for it. Doing that, he just wants another blank check. because No, it's not a blank check. It's actually a, a specific amount. Because that's how Joe Biden works. He no, because if he wanted a blank check and that was even possible, he would have gotten it already. Why would he have to go back again if he wants it? Never mind. He just sends checks to everyone and, of course, always ends up providing some sort of political favors to go along with it. And then his family uh, usually is enriched the other way around. So I'd like to... <laughs> oh, the other way around. Hold on. What? What the... Hold on. I forgot. I'm, hi, happy Halloween. I'm still on the air. I'm still doing my show. Hi, how are you? Are, are you okay? Yeah. Oh, good. Hi. Hi, Martha. How are you? I'm sorry. I'm doing a show right now, so I, I'd love to hang out. I uh, love you guys. But my uh, chat says hello. There's my mom, everybody. Hey. Say, <laughs> happy Halloween. <laughs> Hold on. Say that again. Happy Halloween. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to go upstairs after this is over and uh, stare at a bowl of candy. Um, love you. Okay. I'll call you in a bit. Okay, okay bye. Later, bye. Okay, see you later. Bye. Sorry, you just got to take your mom's call. You got you got to. Yeah, she just, uh, this, this just, you got to. I'd like to hear more from our mm -hmm. speaker about what he's planning to do. I'll continue to vote no. Um, he's, he's planning to pass a continuing resolution. Oh, on money to Ukraine. Yeah, because you're pro-Putin rape squads. Get it. Uh, there's a lot of evidence that there's serious um, fraud going on there. No. Uh, the president of Ukraine rooting out fraud is not proof of fraud. It's proof that they are handling fraud. But then if Marge had been around uh, when uh, when Russia initially invaded in 2014, she would have been trying to push to to make sure that they that Russia had taken more land. Money laundering as well, and that war just needs to end. Yeah, it just needs to end. You know, it could if Russia would just fuck off. What about Congresswoman woman, uh, money specifically to Israel? Because on Thursday, it looks like there will probably be a vote on money uh, that would go to Israel, about $14 billion. But the offset here, the offset is to cut $14 billion of IRS funding. Uh, what do you make of something like that? Where, where's your temperature on that right now? Well, just as I stated before, David, uh, we've got $3.8 billion ready to go to Israel and the defense. And mm -hmm. Ooh, 3.8. Easy there, big spender. And foreign ops. Um, I believe our border is the problem uh, and the, the, the serious issue we should be focusing on. Yeah, she wants, if, if we're going to send uh, attackums and uh, JDAMs and missiles and lasers and dig a moat and fill it with alligators with frickin' laser beams on their heads. We're going to do it at the southern border. You know, my platform and policy perspective is America first, of course. Or uh, shooting American cars first or allowing uh, mass shootings to escalate so that more Americans are killed while they're just trying to buy fucking groceries or go bowling. I stand with Israel and our friends. No, you don't. And allies over there, and I support them um, in their... Emotionally.
It's like thoughts and prayers. In their war against Hamas, uh, they were attacked horrifically, and they should respond, and they are responding. Israel's also a strong, independent nation, and they're a nuclear... So they don't need our money. ...nuclear armed nation, uh, which... She should... Yeah, so you're suggesting they should just nuke Gaza? How very Christian of you. ...makes them not anybody that can just be pushed around. They're, they're Israel... Actually, it's kind of difficult. If your line is anything but nukes, uh, I mean, you know that that's a turning point. It, it, it actually does make it harder. It's, and there's an argument that even that the Iron Dome has lulled the Israelis into a false sense of security about the threat that was growing in Gaza for the longest time because they figured it, the Iron Dome will take care of the missiles and they've kind of become a low hum in the background. Defense Force is one of the strongest militaries in the world. And I am very... Um per capita confident in their ability to defeat Hamas uh those evil terrorists um but those evil terrorists do batters but what I think I want to hear is I want to hear more details you see it's not easily so-called paid for out of the IRS and the money the 14 billion um you know the 87,000 IRS agents have already been uh unfunded defunded uh for the rest of this cycle yeah, just to help Donald Trump, you know, make sure they don't look through his books or people like him at that level. And I'd like to hear right. more about how that works. I think if we <laughs> Yeah, I I'm, I don't know how it works and I don't even work there. You, you spend a lot of time there. You Maybe they have, may, I don't know, maybe there's a library you go to. We're going to take any money and give it to Israel. I could be in support of taking money away from these universities and colleges where these protests. Yeah, st state universities and colleges. Tests are going on, mm. pro-Hamas protests. Mm, yeah, defund, defund Harvard. That'll do it. That'll pay for it. I'd be interested in taking money away from... All 20,000 of them? Uh, 20,000 bucks? Say France that has um, uh, many different Islamists in their country. Uh, there should be no country receiving money from America that is supporting terrorists. Yeah, I don't think we have a lot of foreign aid going to France. I'm sure we have uh, things we co we collaborate on funding. So I want to hear some different ideas. Yeah. Uh, well, they're certainly not going to come from the space between your ears. That's for fucking sure. Hmm. Here's a good idea. And this might be nutty. Uh, this might just be the way that I lean. But um, how about, just floating this idea, that uh, um, you don't wait for someone else to come up with an idea that you can hear. How about you come up with some on your own, say them, and people will either... Uh, appreciate them because they actually work or most likely because of who you are tell you you're a fucking idiot and you don't know what you're talking about yep i like that yep so essentially what you're saying is <clears throat> essentially there's already a bill that's out there uh, yeah it's just out there it's way uh, that has 3.8 billion dollars funding for israel in it but it also funds our border it sounds like and you're saying if it's not attached to that uh, then it should be attached to something else. But as far as writing blank checks from the taxpayers to go anywhere to fund any wars. Um, yeah, we don't do that. We don't have a blank check policy fucking anywhere. They, you do realize there's a fucking, this woman sits on committees or used to, and this idiot, she's got to know, they do mark these fucking things up. I mean, they're big numbers, but they are actual fucking numbers. You're saying that's not a good idea because it isn't. It's not a good idea to just hand out blank checks. I agree. And if anybody ever did that, we'll, we'll, I promise we'll bring it up. Uh, because we have a, an invasion on our own border. So if... No, no, I, I got to say, I, as, as wars go, I'm not afraid of uh, women and children. Yeah, I'm not, they don't scare me. Especially when the vast majority of them are sent back to their countries of origin and anyways. Clarify if I got that part right, but the second part of... You didn't. I'm clarifying. None of this has been right. I don't even know what the fuck he's doing there. My question is, how can we help you? What phone calls can we make? What can we... Yeah, yeah. Can we hire someone to help you with your wardrobe or perhaps... Um... Say, what can we do? Thank you, Gina. Yeah, let me clarify that. We've passed HR2 out of the House and it's sitting in the Senate. And that is complete border security for America. <laughs> the Democrats in the Senate have done nothing with it. We've all... By the way, it's sealing the border up, which would, by, uh, I mean, the only upside of it, it was, it would absolutely destroy the state of Texas.
I, I suppose every every cloud has a silver lining. Also passed the defense and the state foreign ops appropriation bills, and those bills contain three point eight billion dollars for for military weapons, ammunition, defense, and also. Yeah, but they cut all the Ukraine aid, so fuck. The you. replenishment of the Iron Dome for because Israel doesn't need this stuff. I mean, they they'll they'll eventually need some. They basically need defensive weapons. But Ukraine actually needs our support. Israel kind of doesn't. The force they're up against is not equal to fucking Russia. For Israel. That money is specifically for Israel. And the Democrats in the Senate and Joe Biden have done nothing with those bills. No, they have. They, uh, I'm sure they've laughed. They've read through them and gone, fuck that. That's money that... That's something. ...to go straight to Israel. Yes, yeah, straight to Israel. Blank check. Just whatever they want to spend that $3.8 billion on. Up to them. Today. Not even broken down. If they would pass them and Joe Biden would sign them into law. And I believe we have to prioritize our border first because we have over 1.5 yeah. million gotaways in our country. And many of those could be terrorists that are right here in the homeland. Yeah. Cat Catholic Guatemalan terrorist babies. Let me turn real quick to something uh, Israel-related, Congresswoman. Jake Tapper, he's a piece of work. Rashida Tlaib, she's a piece of work. Uh, these people really, uh, it's just horrible to hear what they're having to say. J what they're having to say? Are you, they're being forced? Jake Tapper, excuse me, on CNN the other day. Thank you, Jess. Uh, just totally lit into you. He didn't spend any time uh, getting on Rashida Tlaib's horrible, uh, you know, stance and verbiage. But she, he took his time to go after you. We want to play that and get your reaction. Have a look. You're never going to believe who the Republican offering this motion to censure Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib is. I want you to take a guess. Go ahead. Take a guess. That's right. It's Marjorie Taylor Greene. And it gets worse because when you read Greene's resolution, you realize it is A, written by someone who seems to have learned about the Arab-Israeli conflict maybe 10 minutes before, who maybe didn't even have access to Wikipedia. Ouch. And B, while there are plenty of valid criticisms of Congresswoman Tlaib, this resolution twists a bunch of things that she said beyond recognition. And C, the resolution seems much more focused on January 6th than it does on October 7th. Throughout its pages, Marjorie Taylor Greene describes this act of civil disobedience from a bunch of left-wing Jewish groups that are critical of Israel's government. This act as an insurrection. This is not an insurrection. It might be a bunch of folks with whom you disagree. It might be a bunch of people you think are misguided, acting in a way you don't like. But this is not an insurrection. Anti-Semitism is not a cudgel to be used against people for political points. No, nor is Islamophobia or rape. Now they're playing a big chunk of this shit. I'm surprised. I thought they would slice off a little piece, but he's just dunking on her. So is, it, does, is this the clip that ends with him actually taking his nuts out and lowering them over a green screen and they're just going to, they're going to clip it and put it over her head? Racism or anti-gay behavior or misogyny or, or any other kind of bigotry. Just over three weeks ago, 1,400 people, mostly Jews, mostly civilians, were slaughtered here in some of the cruelest and most unimaginable ways in the deadliest day for Jews since the Holocaust. This is not a game. It's disgusting what he was saying. I want to give you an opportunity. Oh, it, it is a game and that that it, they weren't killed in unimaginable ways. I guess you spent a lot of your days, what, imagining it? You need to respond. Clearly, it's Tapper to leave in 2024. What's your sense? No, he disagreed with what she was saying, but he said she, that that MTG's uh, slapdash crayons and hammers piece of legislation uh, is a bunch of bullshit making, you know, trying to make some Jan 6 political points out of it. Yeah. He's definitely a Rashida Tlaib apologist, and he's also standing with Hamas and the groups that performed uh -huh. an. Yeah, that's why he said, uh, like that the that the Jews were brutalized. Yeah, that's why he brought that up. It's what any Hamas person would do. Insurrection into the Capitol complex.
coming into the Cannon House office building, you know, several of them were charged with assaulting police officers. This was not good. Not the peaceful group that who gives a shit. They didn't interfere with the workings of government. They sat in the fucking rotunda making noise. They didn't stop the vote. They didn't stop the peaceful transition of power, shithead. They, there was zero impact of what they did on the greater function of government. Jan 6, they tried to stop the count and switch out the votes for the person who lost. Jake Tapper showed to uh, pick, pick and chose his video images to show. I'll also let you know, I don't watch Jake Tapper. Um, I don't know him. I've, I'm sure he's happy to hear that. Personally, I've never even talked to him. He knows nothing about me. No, he doesn't. You're right. But he can read. And in looking at your, uh, you know, the amendment, the bill you put forward, it's your, your censure, I guess, uh, is it a form letter at this point? Um, it, it looked like shit to him. Maybe you could maybe you could walk him through it, and you're like, I was just being cute here in this paragraph. I had down here. I was like, I misspell words on purpose. It's a thing I do. So he has no right to assume and and lie about my opinions and my beliefs. No, he's not lying about your opinions or beliefs. He's looking at what you read and inferring it from that. As a he didn't. It's not like he's doing it without that document. Person. Um. So I'm highly offended by Jake Tapper. Oh dear. You're offended. I would I would seek to get him canceled then if I were And, and really, I'm appalled. Uh, by the way, uh, what's the... Hold on. Uh, hey, Ben, Jesus Christ, man. You got to start talking slower when I call you or whatever. Uh, yeah, your voice is too high-pitched. It hurts. What's that uh, phrase you always... Oh, yeah. F fuck your feelings. That's what it was. It was... Uh, anyways, I know you guys love that shit. That he would, he would go to such an extent... Uh, to make mm. sure that he carefully walks the line of defending Rashida Tlaib, the most pro-terrorist, pro-Hamas, anti-Israel, anti-Semitic member of Congress in United States history. And censure is not far enough. This is a woman that should be expelled from Congress. Shame on Jake Tapper. Shame on CNN. Well, you're using her uh, to get... If you believe what she's saying is pro-terrorist or is in its own way a form of insurrection or terrorism, you are attempting to use her to further your anti-Ukraine attitude and push through a bill. So, I, I mean, if you're riding piggyback on something, you can hardly, you know, claim innocence. For, for putting that message out and shame on anyone that believes those lies. Well, no. Well, I, yeah, I, I think... We can all read your bill. I'll do that later, and then I'll uh, point it out to my folks because uh, that are on here because the chat is awesome. No shame on you, MTG. Anybody that uh, has those views that you just told us and doesn't look at Wikipedia because it's full of liberal malarkey is that's right. I don't. Even, that's like that's such bullshit. Like all the history stuff on there. Like the none of that stuff about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict they put on there is true. Like those things didn't happen. A friend exactly. of mine, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for your fight uh, and for all you do for us out in Yes, your struggle with the English language. Washington, D.C. Oh, they, so she left or they had a kerfuffle. So they just had this as the, like, they cut an exit video for her to go. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. It's the House Parks Mega Worldwide. All right. Tomorrow, I think Phil's going to join us again for our second hour. Fingers crossed he'll be with us. And then he's, I th he might be coming into town, uh, into Vegas, before he leaves for uh, to go back to Ukraine. So on Thursday, it's a possibility. We're, we'll see you. We'll see. I'll let you know. And if he does, then I will, uh, I'll pick a little moment to live stream it. And then I'm going to, like, maybe I'll have him come for the Thursday show. And I'll set up something in my other room and we can just kind of sit and have a variation of the show in the room. That would be kind of cool. Um, and then that night I'm going to, you know, get him tickets to see my girl's show. I think I know somebody who might be able to get us in. Um, which is, of course, uh, Ladylike. It's at the Virgin Hotel and Casino. If you're in town for the Formula One stuff, uh, which I know most of you will be, uh, it's a, it's right there. It's, I mean, you can go there, enjoy the show, and then, I mean, it's right on the, one of the corners. It's very exciting. You could be eight... 10, 15 yards from a tire when it flies off and kills someone in the stands. It'll be great. Uh, anyways, um, much love. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. It's very strong. It's very possible Phil won't be on tomorrow, but we'll, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll text with him because he might just be here on Thursday and you know, do it that way. Mm. Uh, but either way, take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. And remember, if you're ever confronted with a choice that you believe is the lesser of two evils, choose less evil. See you later.